Hey y'all, so uh, end of the day, we're back here at my brother's house, Jared's. We hit, uh, this morning we went to Dark Door Spirits. After that we went to... Bear House Brewing Company. In Ybor City? Yep. Um, just kind of hung out around Tampa. However, we're back to the house now and instead of opening the new stuff that we bought today... <laughs> I found a stash of miscellaneous whiskeys because my brother does not do liquor. Not like usually. him. Not like him. <laughs> so instead of opening the new stuff, we're going to try some of the stuff that we found in his pantry. Um, we're going to start. The first one is American Barrels. It is from American Barrels. South Carolina. So, cool bottle. Shotgun shell bottom. You can see that. Has the snake embossed in the bottle. Coming up to the top there. And, I don't Is that a leather wrap? Leather, maybe hemp. With, up a, there. with a dog tag. With a dog tag. You gonna try it? Yes, yeah, I need a glass. I need a glass. So, light color. Um, that. Typical caramel cover color you would expect in a whiskey. <clears throat> right Spicy. Off, yep, right off the bat you get the charcoal to the nose. All right. So it says it's a 90 proof, uh, 49%. 45. Is it 45? I don't have a reader on. Um, I don't know, it hits heavier than a 90 proof. It's not bad, though. It does not have, I would say, more of your common whiskeys would have to it where it right off the bat it has that that sour punch to the face it, it kind mm -hmm. of for me it eases it in and it does have a little bit of a a weird aftertaste once you get it to the back of the the throat but yeah this, there's a definite punch in the beginning um like i said more than i would expect from a 90 proof um I have to look that one up because the other thing, there's no age statement on the bottle. Um, I would I buy it for my bar, um, depending on how much it is. I think I use it for a mixer though. All right. Um, you want to do this one next, or you want to yeah, do, do the Jameson? We do Sean's Bar. All right, you tell them about that one. All right, so Sean's Bar is this bottle you can only actually get in Ireland at the actual bar that it came from. Sean's Bar is the oldest bar in the world. It's located in Athlone, Athlone Ireland. Um, it was founded in 900 AD, and through the, the way they were able to find out how old it was was when they were doing construction on the building, they found a bunch of uh, time period pieces from the, the 900s. Um, they have their, um, they had a, a whiskey company actually make their, uh, make a bottle series for them. And if you go on the back, it actually tells you the history of Sean's Bar and how it came about. So it's not bad. Um, I look, um, look forward to having this with Buzzy. Obviously, there's an age statement on that one? I'll let you figure that. I don't see one, but the label 
So obviously we're sitting in this kitchen. Um, the lighting's not great for doing video. Um, everything on the bottle except for the name is printed in gold, so it's super hard to see under these lights. But we will. Uh, I'll look that up and check it out. Um, I think it's kind of cool because I have never had this and to have some whiskey from the oldest bar in Ireland, I think it's going to be pretty awesome. So right off the bat, anybody that has ever drank uh, Irish whiskey, you always get the sweeter notes right off the, at, at the beginning. Definitely. So it doesn't have that, that bourbon, uh, that natural, you know, that charcoal smell of the bourbon that you would get from, you know, a Kentucky bourbon or something from Tennessee. So this is going to be different. Now, a little cool thing about Irish whiskey is they actually use American oak barrels. So. That's good. A lot of fruit. Get the caramel, get the vanilla. Um, it's a very subtle whiskey. It rings in at 40%. It, so, I mean, your typical Irish whiskey is about 40% unless you have barrel-aged uh, whiskeys. Um, can it tastes like cookies. And I'm trying to, trying to think of... Well, don't ask me because I can guess the, uh, the toffee that you... Uh, the saltwater taffy that you brought yesterday. It, I even get a little toffee, but I get... Um, Almost like Fig Newton. Probably a very figgy um, aftertaste. You do get a lot of the uh, a, a, a lot of the um, the vanillas and everything out of the, the, the oak barrels. Like I said, they a lot of um, Irish whiskeys are actually made and used uh, American whiskey barrels um, because of the uh, the flavors that American whiskey actually instills into those. Uh, into those whiskey barrels, uh, the the Irish whiskey likes to take notes out of that. And if you ever get a chance to do the Jameson tour in Dublin, because they don't, they actually don't make it out of there anymore. It's made out of Middleton, uh, Ireland. Um, you'll get a great tour, and they will teach you everything about Irish whiskey. So while he finishes that, I think I figured out why I found all the stuff in your pantry and why you you never have anybody over your house because you don't like to share. And oh. just in <laughs> case, by the way, I found this stuff by accident looking for something, actually looking for light switches earlier, and I found a shelf of hidden whiskeys in his pantry. However... This one is a Jameson Distiller Edition. If you guys watched my original intro video, I told you I had a the basement bar. It's the my basement pub, so a Hoida basement pub. It's kind of cool about this box. Here's the bottle that I pulled out of it. And I know a lot of you out there are like, oh, we drink Jameson every day. Well, so do I. There's always Jameson in my bar. This is kind of cool, though, because on the back of the box, if you can see that, it says, this bottle has been specially labeled for Ohoida. So I thought that was kind of cool. And this was buried so far back in the pantry, I didn't even see it. He got in there and he's like, oh, you didn't pull all of it out? Well, I didn't see that because it was back behind the sugar and flour and Everything that we know he doesn't use on a daily basis. Because <laughs> if it can't be cooked in the microwave, you won't get it here. <laughs> well, um, or, I mean, if it's not leftovers. <laughs> and it's funny he says that, that I would... Oh, also, just so you know, it says a hoiter on the front as well. Yes, it does. Bottle. So um, I didn't point that out. But. 
Where did it stop recording it? I don't know. I'll blend them okay. when I run it through the editing. Right. So, Jameson Distillery Edition bottle exclusively for Ahoyda. It's very strong. Now, if you ever go to um, the Jameson Distillery in Ireland, they have different uh, subsections of bottles. Um, this being one, uh, they also have a Cooper's Edition. Obviously, we know a Cooper is a individual that actually makes the barrels. Um, and then, you know, depending on how they have an employee's edition, sometimes they'll name a bottle after an employee if he did exemplary. Exemplar. I can never say that word. Exemplary. Exemplary work for the uh, for the distillery. Um, so, I mean, this is a... Uh, the cool thing, like I said, if you go there also, we're going to break out another bottle here in a few minutes that is a uh, barrel aged that you can actually only get in Ireland um, because they have the black barrel, but it's, it's a barrel aged edition. And it's actually one that if you want to spend the money and it's not bad, you can actually take it, you pour it straight from the actual barrel to the bottle and you actually write all the information on the front of the uh, label and your name actually goes into an actual registry of the bottle, uh, of what bottle number that was and everything out of that barrel. So it's it's kept in the, in the archives for the rest of eternity or as long as Jameson's still around. So. You get pretty excited about our Irish lineage, don't you? I do. It's a little. It's exciting, you know. Everybody wants to be That's Irish. It's very exciting. <laughs> but you can tell the difference between when we were talking about this bottle. You were like, "Just get through it. Let's drink it." Yeah. And these bottles. Well, I mean, and another thing too is I, I think that the quality mm -hmm. of a bottle is. You can see the quality of a bottle also by the, the actual cap that they use. Um, you know, it's obviously a lot of whiskeys have corks, but this one actually has. An actual wood top cap, um, mm. the same as this one, the uh, American barrel one. So, and this Sean's bar actually only has a plastic one. So, not to comment on that. I mean, the Sean's bar whiskey I felt was a very smooth and that was good and drinkable whiskey that you could drink at any time. But I also think that the Distillers Edition, like I said, if you ever get a chance to spend the twenty dollars to do the tour, it's worth every penny. All right. That's nice. Very smooth. Yeah, there's almost no punch to that whatsoever. No, and I mean that's a forty percent or also so. Um, very little spice. Definitely some, not a lot, but there's there's a good amount of vanilla flavor in that. I don't get I don't get chocolate. Like I do on a lot of a lot of the other. I want to put this back in the box while we're talking. A lot of the other whiskeys that you know you can't multitask, right? Yeah, I can. No, I I think that um, what my brother's trying to say is is like there's a lot of out of all the, all the whiskeys we've done, this one has the least amount of bite. And I get a lot of fruit now, so. But it's not a low, I mean, it's 40% um, alcohol, just the same as Sean's bar was. I mean, the American barrel was 45, so. Nice. And we'll show off the name one more time. <laughs> All right, what's the next one? So, you can explain that one a little bit, because. Uh, Blend a lock. So, was this one out of the bottom or the bag? Yep. Okay. Uh, this is another Irish whiskey. This is a single, <clears throat> excuse me, single cask. This is 42. 42%. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see it when I was holding it, but there's the label. It's kind of dark. Hopefully you can see it from there. So out of all the, um, out of all the, probably the, the whiskeys that you, you would actually get in, um, 
in Ireland. I mean, this is considered like a, a craft distillery. Um, it's made in Glendalock Valley, uh, which is it, uh, just, it's about an hour and a half south of Dublin. And it is, uh, they have multiples of this. You can get the regular bottle in America, but mm-hmm. the specialty bottles, now, give you an idea of this. This is an American, this is aged in American oak with a French oak finish. So this probably should have a little sweetness just from the French oak. So for me, um, the, I enjoy, if I'm going to, I always say that if you're going to drink good whiskey, drink it with good people. So with this, I, I you know, the Irish say that the, uh, that whiskey is the, uh, water of life. And for us, I mean, uh, and that's another reason I started this channel. If you're going into a bar drinking bourbon and whiskey and, and other spirits, like you're at a college frat party my opinion you're doing it wrong find you a good whiskey a good bourbon rum whatever it is you drink we tried some of those today at dark door some good friends and enjoy did you pour yours yet Mm -mm. by the way i um i like to savor my alcohol a lot more than others yeah well i'm pouring like half of what you are no, I'm doing the I same. I just have a taller glass. I don't want to stumble to the living room when we're done. Listen, I'm just bigger. <laughs> we poor. <laughs> and by the way, he has like 400 glasses in this house. We just grabbed a couple glasses. Um, I did not see one Glen Karen. No. I know what I'm going to get you for Christmas. A Karen? I don't want one of those. I have a, I have a Leanne. <laughs> All right. So, Glendalock single cask. This is, like you said, 42% alcohol. So, that one, little sour in the beginning, almost like over ripened fruit, but the finish, super sweet. Lots of fruit. Um, it's to almost me it's, dry. Yeah, it's like, me. Is very. This is. There's no punch to this one at mm-hmm. all. Um, and that's like I said. I, I when you start drinking, um, when you start getting up there. I mean, I've had fifteen hundred dollar bottles of. I've had buddies share fifteen hundred dollar uh, bottles of whiskey and scotch and all that with me, and I'm. I've had forty dollar bottles of whiskey and scotch that tasted better. Um, it's not necessarily, it's just, you know, that's the nice thing with alcohol is everybody has their own palate. So we have one more that we're going to do. I'm also going to, unfortunately, yes. That's all I was looking for to make sure we had them all. (laughs) Are you hiding more? These are not the kind of people you want to drink with. I'm just, I'm just throwing that out there. Oh, like you went, like, that was like up in the attic. You couldn't reach, any higher you'd have had to have a ladder. You almost had to have one anyways. All right. So, earlier we talked about the bottle that you can actually get poured with your name and everything on it. This is Jamerson Black Barrel Cash Strength. This comes in at... 60.2 percent alcohol all right this is how it will come it shows bow street is where the distillery the original distillery is at if you ever want to know some cool history about the irish uprising and everything of 1916 um the cool thing about it is is jameson had workers that were a part of the irish uprising and he actually funded the um he actually still paid them why they were st- stuck at work because of all that was going on during the uprising. Um, it has a cast number, your bottle number, the ABV, where the distillery was that it was from, and it, it says the name where it was bottled by me on 10 5 of no, 510. 
Now this right here is a little harsher, um, in my opinion. It's a lot more refined. It, you should probably taste a lot of uh, your fig, um, a lot more fruits, the, the spices and everything. So, see the you said this was sixty sixty point two percent. So one hundred and twenty point four percent, or is it so one hundred and twenty proof. I'll let you pour first. Did you want to smell it first? Hmm, I'll wait for the glass. So a lot of people don't know this, that with Irish whiskeys, they have to do a minimum of seven years in order to be, in order to be accepted by Jameson as being a Irish whiskey. Um, and a lot of that goes into the, the process of, you know, with, uh, with regular bourbons, you have a three year, uh, usually on average with, uh, Jack Daniels and Maker's Mark and all those is usually on average three years. Um, that's why anything past three years with American whiskeys is usually considered, you know, an, an aged bourbon. Uh, with this, you're going to get, this is, if I'm not mistaken, um, like a 10-year. Um, a lot of these barrels are actually from um, the way that they described it to me, which, you know, it could have been a sales pitch. But the way they described it to me was this is the, all the original recipes that, that Jameson used uh, when he started building out uh, the name and everything. Like I said, go to Ireland, take the tour. It's absolutely awesome. The Guinness uh, experience is also a great experience. Uh, they do a connoisseur experience. It's a little pricier, but it um, it is uh, worth it because... You, with the connoisseur experience, you would be taken in a room with 10 other people. You get to pour your own beer, and you're taught by a, a beer connoisseur of, of Guinness. And they also you also get to have six other beers on that tour, including the uh, some of their originals that they had before they went to uh, Nitro in their Guinnesses. So, yeah. Um, Buzzy, what did you think of that? And I like that one. Like, a lot of oak. Um, keep in mind if you're doing whiskeys and bourbons, that's probably not the one to start with. That's kind of a high proof. Yeah. To start with. Um, you and Grant, like Jared said, this is something that, that he did himself, wrote everything on the bottle and held up for you guys to see. So you're, pro you're not going to find this on a, a bar somewhere around here. But if you're taking somebody out and you're like, Hey, let's go, let's go drink some bourbons. Watch the proof on it, because you blast that pellet with 114, 120, 120 proof. They're not going to want another one. They're not going to enjoy their night. Just keep that in mind. That's good, though. A lot of oak. Um, there is some burn to it. That's the proof. Well, um, and, and a lot of... I got a lot of toffee. A yeah. lot. Well, and, that's, and that goes with the... Uh, that That's what happens when you really, you know, have a... a a, a barrel aged style um, with the, the cash strength that's what you're getting you're, mm -hmm. you're really taking all the flavor that that barrel has to offer or that cask and you're, you're putting it into that and that's why alcohol is so great because depending on how you make it whether it's beer gins whiskeys I mean even sours which are not my favorite style of beer um, it's crazy what where the alcohol industry is going. Uh, we are light years ahead of, um, I think, of where we thought we would be. And, and some people may argue that we aren't where we should be with beer. You know, like people might argue that we should be able to.
produce a beer start to finish in a week. But jokes on them, we're almost to that point where we can produce it. We're talking about whiskey now. Oh, sorry. We're going to talk about beer tomorrow. Oh, well, I'm, I all apologize. Right. I think that's all the whiskeys we have to try tonight. I got one more. I'm yeah. just playing. <laughs> Actually, you know, we do. We do have one more. We do. We let's, have. Let's hit this. All right. Well, so this is a uh, caramel apple moonshine, homemade by a friend of mine back in Indiana that I brought down here for for us to enjoy this week while I was down here on vacation. By the way, when I get home, the videos will get better. I ordered an actual video camera and everything to do this with. Uh, but for right now, the phone will have to work because I'm on vacation. The phone's all I have. So this will be our last one. Enjoy. So aren't you? Caramel Apple Moonshine. Thank you, Jen and David. I guess I'll have to tag Jen in this video. It's so good. To get to the beer thing, tomorrow, we're actually going to his new property where his brewery is going to be. You guys are going to get to see a first look at the building before anything's been done to it. And uh, supposedly he's going to put me to work because he wants some bushes pulled and stuff. But I guess that's why I'm down here on vacation. Well, actually, you know, it's it's funny. when he When he said he was coming down, I was like, all I could think of is... How can I get some free labor out of this? Uh, but in all seriousness, it is always, I only get to see him once a year. So um, we both have busy lives. We both are very busy. Um, when he said he was doing a podcast, I was like, absolutely. Let's, this is awesome. Um, it helps me. It helps him. Um, obviously, if you've seen in his previous videos, the reason he's doing this is to highlight, you know, the industries. Um, whether it's the craft beer industry or the even the craft distilling industry, mm -hmm. um, I like craft. Yeah, I mean the, I the nice thing with craft is it still has that special touch to it. Where with these these bigger bigger picture uh, you know companies like Jack Daniels and all that, you, you get you, they've you know you feel like they've kind of gone away from like what made them where they were. So that's obviously an opinion. That's uh, subjective, and you know, I I think that you know, I'm anxious to see where the especially the whiskey industry is going. Um, it sucks. I know that as we go further along in this, or as Buzzy does, um, he will you know probably highlight. I can't. I can only imagine how many bottles of whiskey he's going to have by next year. <laughs> He's going to be like, man, I bought all these, and all I did was drink, you know, a sip here, a sip there. And then I'm going to be like, hey, Buzzy, why do you have dust on your bottles? So No, there won't be dust on my bottles. All right, y'all. Tomorrow we will check out his building, the future home of Oath Brewing, Plant City, Florida. Have a good night. Cheers.